Prime Time is presented by Miller Lite and approved by the men of the square table. Good call. And now, here's your host, Stuart Scott. What is good? NFL Primetime says divisional playoff weekend is all good, especially if you're the home team. What's up, Stuart, Jaws, and the coach? Hey, since 1990, on this weekend in the playoffs, home teams are 51 and 13. Guys, give me three words as to why. As we saw this evening, loud crowd noise. Coach? Fans, comfort, and it's your house. you got to protect your house. That's not three. <laughs> that's like seven. Yes, but I want, I want America to understand what I'm saying. <laughs> Saints, did you hear? Saints hosting the Eagles. NFC Division of Playoff. First playoff appearance for Nolan since 2000. Andy Reid hoping his boys can roll back to the NFC title game. Second place was Woo! Drew God. Brees to Reggie Bush. Reggie caught 88 passes. Guys, was he ever baptized like that and never in his life? No. That'll make jacked up, believe me. Yeah. <laughs> of the year. Maybe the hit of the year. Reggie's shaking up. He did return later first. Deuce McAllister. Big brother got loose the entire game. 1,057 oh, yards right, this year. Right, right. Ran over somebody for 28 yards. That led to a Saints field goal. His 4,000-yard season his last five years. Later first. Saints up three zip. Reggie gets some redemption. Bad some redemption. idea. Look at this. Woo. That's redictified That's old good. school like you used to do at Southern Cal. You say redictified? That's redictified. Saints ran redictified for 208 yards on the ground. That one led to a field goal. Next Eagles possession, Jeff Garcia as cool as the other side of the pillow. 75-yard oh, nice touchdown pass to Dante Stallworth. Longest pass play in Eagles postseason history. Jaws, you had a 63-yard touchdown pass yourself. Another record falls. <laughs> Later second, Saints down 7-6. Brees, quick pass to the rookie Marcus Colston. He had 70 catches this year. Sets up first and goal. Now second and goal, holla at a player when you see him in the street. Reggie Bush. Bush bottled up, inside, outside. The guy who had nine touchdowns this year breaks the paint, postseason style. Saints up 13 to seven. 330 left in the second. Eagles third and six. Garcia to Hank Basket. 25 yard gain. Sweet. Later in the drive, under a minute left, Brian Westbrook. How valuable is he to this He's team? Superman. He does it all. He runs, he catches, he blocks. He is their most explosive player. One of the plays of the game, Stephen Weatherford to punt. Sean Bate Barber was coming in to block it. Weatherford heads up play, takes off, first down. Take it later. Last play of the half. Big Three. Ben. Almost. Oh. Big Ben play. Knock it down. Coach, how much does a coach really think this will work? Well, I tell you what, you got to take a chance with it right, right at the end of the half, at the end of the game, too. I've had it work in reverse against me, so every time that ball goes up, I get nervous. Colston almost caught the ball. Saints down 14 to 13 in recess. Third quarter. Westbrook outside. Gets freed by two LJ Smith blocks. Peace. Woo! Last week, Brian Westbrook set an Eagle postseason record for longest touchdown run. He broke it this week with that 62-yarder. Next Saints possession, though, down 21-13. Drew Brees, cool Brees. Drew, 20 of 32, 243 to Billy Miller over the middle, 29 yards. Crazy good catch. Great throw. Next play, first and goal, Deuce McAllister. Oh, this is unbelievable. Oh, that's just unbelievable. That's pushing the pile. Yep, that's really pushing the pile. Deuce is about 230, 245. He had 11 touchdowns this year, bulled his way in, Saints within one. Next Saints possession, McAllister. His biggest game ever for his career was 184 yards against the Eagles in 2003. He likes playing the Eagles. And then on a play that they usually run to Reggie Bush, Breeze to McAllister, have some. 11-yard touchdown Woo! run. What a How did that work, Coach? Well, it's just, it just a great play. It's a flip play, toss play. But the move, what made it work was the move that McAllister made on the run, on the defensive back. Fourth quarter, Eagles down 27-21. Garcia to Reggie Brown. 24 yards later in the drive, second and one. Westbrook tries the right side. The fresh Prince, Will Smith. No game. Third and one. This was big. Oh, boy. Play action. Thomas Taple, but Scott Fujita put him down. Eagles set on a field goal down 27-24. Saints up. Breeze. Colston. Slant. First down gain of 13. Under 330 left in the fourth. 
Breeze pitches to Reggie Bush. Oh. Perfect pitch. Reggie cannot handle it. Eagles recover. Down three. Chance. Jaws, why did he fumble? Well, you can see right here, it's a play called the 90 flip. He tried to get Bush to the outside with a slanting Eagles defense. Jaquay Thomas came up the field. I think when Bush saw him, he flinched. Took his eyes off the bar. There you go. X St. Darren Howard on the recovery. Woo. Here come the Eagles. Garcia screen to Westbrook. Stop for a loss of one. On second and 11, Westbrook stopped by Fujita for a gain of one. Third and 10, short pass to Westbrook, incomplete. It's late in the game, under two minutes to go. Fourth down and 10, you gotta go for it. On fourth and 10, under a blitz, crazy. First down, right? Uh-uh, false what? start. Crowd noise, loud crowd noise. Scott Silent Young count. in for the injured Sean Andrews, negating the first down, Eagles can't believe it. Now, they went for it on fourth and 10. On fourth and 15 with the buck 56, Andy Reid's, Andy Reid punts it. Fair catch called by Reggie Bush. So Saints trying to ice the game. 137 left on third and one. Eagles now, no timeouts. Big first down. Deuce McAllister ran crazy. 143 yards, the Saints. This is a 40-year-old franchise. This is only the second playoff game they have ever won. Saints beat the Eagles 27 to 24 in week six. The Saints beat the Eagles from the Department of Redundancy Department 27 <laughs> to 24 after the game. Let's go marching in, starting with Deuce McAllister. Nobody said it would be easy. You know, it looked bleak at times for us, but we kept fighting. We kept fighting, and um, you know, we're just proud to be advancing. You know, we were hopeful is that we were able to, you know, get the running game going and push, push. Uh, pushed the defense some, and, and I thought our guys responded well, and certainly when we needed it at the end there. So that, that was uh, exciting. And, you know, all in all, it was a great team effort. We got uh, a, lot of, a lot of hands in this win, including the crowd, and, and we got to get back to, back to work next week for uh, the NFC Championship game. You know, these are the type of games we live for, you know. And uh, this game is, you know, it's even bigger for the city. You know, just because of obviously everybody's aware, you know, Hurricane Katrina and, and everything that went on with that. So it's uh, it's huge for the city, and um, you know, we hopefully we just keep winning. We felt like every time out, we were not only playing for each other and our team, but more importantly, this city and this community. Deuce McAllister, 21 carries, as I said, a buck 43, two touchdowns. You know, all the talk has been about Reggie Bush, and Reggie's had a great, great rookie year. But Deuce McAllister, old school vet, and after Reggie fumbled that ball, Deuce McAllister was the man for the Saints. Afterwards, Andy Reid talked about punting after not punting on fourth and 10. Now, I guess with hindsight, maybe we should have done that, you know. Since we didn't get the ball back, but uh, you know, I thought I thought we'd be able to get the ball back, and uh, you know the odds might be better us doing that. I figured they'd run the football, and we might be able to stop them there and uh, <clears throat> get the get the football back. So they went forward on fourth and ten, and made it on fourth and fifteen, fourth and fifteen and a half, fourth and sixteen. Why does Andy Reid decide now, coach, to punt the ball? Well. It, it, this year in the league, and, and st stats will pull this up for you, one out of 19 times, fourth and 15 was made. That's not an important thing, though. I, I think what he thought, he really thought, if he punted it down or got him in bad field, maybe there would be a fumble, maybe the defense would stop him. But, but it's not like the Saints had been stopping nope. the running game. I mean, the Saints averaged 5.6 yards per carry in this game. If that other team is running the ball, and you know they're going to do nothing but run the ball, why give them a chance? because you think you can stop it and make him punt the ball back to you. That's the only reason he did it. You know, with access to the results, oh, it's yeah. easy to second yeah. guess after yeah. the fact. You have to make that call before the play happened, and it's all about percentages, and a percentage mm -hmm. is this. Can you, make, can you convert fourth and 16? As the coach has said, only one all season long, one of 19, fourth and 15 or more all season long, or do you expect your defense to go out and stop the Saints running game in three plays and get the ball back with a minute to go? It's a tough call. It's percentages. Yeah. And they're both low percentages, by do the way. Do not kill Andy Reid over this. Where they lost the football game, in my opinion, second and one on the three-yard hey, line. Good. So we, we talked about second. Then, they, then they, went, they went to the quick pass. They lost yardage on third down. I'm just saying second and one, you got to knock that right. in there. 
might have been a huge gamble to go for it in fourth and 15. But remember, this is the Eagles team that a couple of years ago in the playoffs against the Packers went for it and made it on a fourth and 26. I think you'll be calling talk radio this week, won't you, Steve? <laughs> oh, boy. A yeah. <laughs> whole lot more to come on this game, including the great run by the Saints this year. But coming up next, there was no way the Colts could do anything on Baltimore's home field with that defense, right? Wrong. The World Beer Cup, over 2,000 beers are judged from 540 breweries in 56 countries. And in 2006, one of those beers won gold for best American style light lager for the fourth time. In fact, Miller Lights won more awards at the World Beer Cup than any other light beer. For award-winning taste, there's no debate. Miller Light, good call. Donovan McNabb is driven, motivated, hungry. Hungry enough for Campbell's Chunky New England Clam Chowder. Feed your NFL-sized hunger. Campbell's Chunky, meals that fill you up right. You kidding me? What? Pull over. I didn't do anything. Kate's older brother owes money, and Johnny's holding it until he gets paid. So you're like Ransom or something. That's hot. Kid goes home. Everybody's looking at life. Life. Oh, give me a sign. This winter. We gotta kill the kid. That's a joke, right? How far do you go? There's a missing person poster on every street corner. When there's no turning back. I would never rat you guys out. Yeah, okay, we know that, man. Alpha Dog. Okay. Rated R. Now playing. Meet the Dollar Menuners. From vintage pleather to McDonald's double cheeseburgers, these folks are all about the Washingtons. Looks like Rachel here has this season's it accessory. No wonder she rolls with such a handsome man to Raj. These people live like money grows on trees. Trees they can't find. But they have no trouble finding de-luxurious meals on the dollar menu. Now I buy that for a dollar. She is the team mom. Her boys are big. So she's big on Campbell's Chunky. Hearty meals to feed an NFL-sized hunger. Team Mom, we salute you. Campbell's Chunky, deals that fill you up right. Dallas Cowboy Roy Williams covers more ground than just about anyone in the NFL. I'll be right there. But even he can't be there for every child that needs his help. Hey, you're good with kids, aren't you? Maybe you can give him a hand. Help the NFL and United Way strengthen your community. Volunteer at unitedway.org. NFL Primetime is presented by Miller Lite. For great taste, there's no debate. Miller Lite, always a good call. They loaded the vans and the Colts finally went back to Baltimore. Peyton Manning and that Colts offense tied for second in scoring offense. Ray Lewis and that Raven defense. <laughs> Shut him down, son. Shut him down, son. Land the league in scoring defense, just 12.6 points per game. First quarter, though, Colts, get at me. Peyton getting his hook on with <laughs> Reggie Wayne. First time pro bowler for Reggie Wayne from where? Do you. Do you. Later the drive. Jaws, why does Manning to Reggie Wayne work? Well, he's able to find him in the isolation coverage, the one-on-one, -on -one, in other words, too, and you're not going to stop that combination one-on-one. -on -one. That led to Adam Vinatieri field goal, Indy up 3-0. Next, Ravens drive. Steve McNair rolls out, completes to Todd Heat, who was just rolled up by Nick Harper. Oh, Looked it. like he fumbled. Gary Brackett recovered, but Heat ruled down by contact. Tony Dungy, who hardly ever wins a challenge, challenged immediately. The replay would show the ball came out before the elbow was down. Reversal, Colts take over. After Matt Stover field goal, Manning, middle of the field. Ed Reed, come on, y'all. Uh, Ed's like, good. stop it. Yeah, I don't know. Bad, Coach, bad decision. Is he the best safety in the game? You gotta be. He plays the ball. He plays center field like Mickey Mantle. Well, don't play. tell Brian Dawkins that. Yep. 27 career interceptions for Ed Reed. That led to Jamal Lewis rumbling. Remember, last week, Colts defense held the Chiefs to 44 yards rushing. Late in the drive, but near to the end zone for Todd Heap, intercepted by Antoine Bethea. How did he make the pick? He stared him down, Stu. You watch Steve McNair in the pocket. He allows Bethea to read his eyes and take him to the football. And you're right, the outside receiver was dead open on yep. him. 
Colts take over at their own one yard line. First and 10 later, Peyton over the middle, tipped by Ray Lewis. It actually kept Chris McAllister from picking the ball off. See, Ray's just too good. <laughs> they, they had two plays yeah. in a game like that. How about freaking him with the okie doke? Peyton Manning to Marvin Harrison. Still, though, Marvin held out of the end zone. 12 games in his postseason career, only two touchdown catches for Marvin. This is from a guy who has money 122 for his career. Bank, right? Speaking of money in the bank, from 51, Adam Vinatieri again. Colts take a 9 3 lead. Opening drive of the third. Colts, Peyton. Dallas oh, my. Lots of hitting. And Another three. He can up. pick it and he can <laughs> oh, bring my. it. Woo. That led to Vinatieri's fourth field goal of the day. The all-time playoff field goal leader, Adam Vinatieri now. Bring Lincoln it out. Third. Peyton over the middle. Again, Ray Lewis keeps Get a teammate it. from intercepting the ball. He's what, Charles? What did you say? Too good? He's just too, too good. good. <laughs> Later in the third, Ravens down 12-3. McNair over the middle. Oh, what a oh, God, he yeah, that's a great Stop catch. it. Coach, how good is he as a tight end? Well, so, he's a heck of a football player. He's a very underrated football player. That guy doesn't go to the Pro Bowl. I don't understand. That's how the coach used to catch him, yeah. Stu. Same drive, fourth quarter. Matt Stover, a 51-yarder of his own. It was a knuckle line drive. I think he used a three-wood, but it was good. Ravens <laughs> cut the lead to 12-6. Now, Indy, third and 17 at their own 12. Peyton looking for Harris. Ed Reed, stop it, man. Come on. Stop it, yo. Good as a punt. Five picks in the regular season this year. Ed Reed, two in this game. Ravens ball on their drive. Third and ten. McNair to Mark Clayton. 21 yards and a first down. After trading punts, Colts with the ball, though. Looking to eat some clock. No. Uh, Standing uh, coverage. Just threw that ball. He threw the Boy, ball. Harper, Nick Harper. Harper. Harper did a great job of jumping it. Later in the next drive, third and two, Dominic Rhodes carries up the middle. Oh. Interesting that both quarterbacks, who are great quarterbacks, both former MVPs, throw key interceptions. And look, look at, at the, the clock Colts. right now. Yeah. Old line dominating clock, physical run. style. And the clock is what tick, number one defense? Tick, tick, what tick, number tick, one defense? Like 739 six minutes, at the start. Five Stewart. minutes, yeah. four minutes. Peyton Manning judiciously. Wow. That catch by Dallas Clark kept it alive. Peyton only 15 of 30 for a buck 70, but he mixed in the pass and mixed in the run. And the clock, look at the clock. First down Colts. And then Adam Vinatieri, 35 yards out. In the bank. Tying a playoff record that he set himself against the Colts with his fifth field goal of the game. Tony Dungy, talk about your new feel like he's going to make make everything uh, when he goes out there. In, in games like this, it, it, it's necessary. The Indianapolis Colts beat the Baltimore Ravens in Baltimore. Basically, it was the Indianapolis Colts defense who outshined the number one ranked Baltimore Ravens defense in Baltimore, a place that both franchises used to call home. Steve McNair, 18 to 29, a buck 73, two picks. Peyton had the two picks, but Adam Vinatieri, so it really wasn't Colts 15, Ravens 6. It was Adam Vinatieri 15, Ravens 6, and that Indianapolis Colts defense. Our defense, we challenged them all week. They were going to have to keep it close, keep us in position until we could get them figured out. We never really did get them all the way figured out. But I thought our defense and special teams played outstanding. I mean, what can you say? That they played outstanding, and uh, you know, we knew Baltimore's offense wasn't, you know, super explosive, and we knew they weren't going to score, you know, 30 points either. Playoffs. You lose, you go home. You win, you stay in. Is that simple? It's just that simple. And guys are making plays right now. We're flying around. We're being fast. We're playing physical. We didn't make that many plays in the beginning of the season, but we're making them when it counts. They're playing very well. They're, they've always, they, they, they're a good, they're well-schemed team. They've got some excellent athletes, and if the game can fall their way and be the, the temperament that they want, then they're going to be very good at that and be very hard to beat. We go inside the numbers, and just when you think you know, you, you don't know nothing. <laughs> That's right. Nothing. <laughs> Colts defense allowed 173 yards per game on the ground, the worst in the league, and 41 total touchdowns. In their two playoff games, they've allowed a total of 127 yards on the ground 
and just 14 total points. Guys, this was the 421st playoff game ever, and it was only the fourth playoff game ever where there is not a touchdown score. Now, everyone's talking about, oh, the Ravens defense, the Ravens defense. What has happened to the Colts defense in the postseason? Well, I, I still, I think they get tired of hearing, hey, you can't do this, you can't stop the run, you can't, but they can. They found out they can. They're using a lot of run stunts on first and second down, and they're working right now. The linebackers, the tackling in this football game was 150% better than it's been in the rest of the season. Well, let me take one of Stu's uh, phrases. Big ups <laughs> to Ron Meeks, the defense corner for the Indianapolis Colts. He has his team peaking at the right time. And it's an execution style of defense. They don't give you a lot of exotic looks and schemes. They play simple coverages, and they play them very well. In fact, in the regular season, they only blitz 53 times the entire season. But what you're seeing in the playoffs right now is a team that is tackling very well, and they are playing with a certain physicality. If you would have told me that after two playoff games, Peyton Manning would have had one touchdown pass and five interceptions, and the Colts have won both games, would yeah, you have sit you, for you a straight jacket? You, you would have put you, me you, away. Nobody would buy that. <laughs> nobody would have bought it. And this is a guy who only the second guy ever to have a season with 30 touchdown passes and single-digit interceptions. Still ahead, not just a win for the Saints, but a win for an entire community. We'll look at their run. Inside the Numbers, brought to you by Visa. Go on, live life, and remember that no matter what it takes, life takes Visa. Visa Business Card gives you financial tools to help reduce paperwork, increase efficiency, and maybe even save a tree or two. Your business is your life. Life takes Visa. You guys run the double team a lot, right? Join us in March for ESPN The Weekend at the Walt Disney World Resort. Book your trip online today. One of the great things that I think I've been able to do in my life is, is seize opportunities. I wasn't even a starter, but um, the guy in front of me got hurt, and I had a chance, and I took that chance and had a big day, and I was a starter ever since. And so opportunities are, are seldom perfect, but I've learned that if you're not ready for them, they may not come again. Thursday on an all-new Grey's Anatomy. The decisions they make. You didn't want a baby. No, I did. I just didn't want one with you. The promises they break. You spent 300 grand so you could scrub in on this surgery. Will haunt them forever. Nominated for four Golden Globes, including Best Drama. You're saying you think it's time to let them go? George, what do you think? An all-new Grey's Anatomy, Thursday at 9, 8 central. Followed by an all-new Men in Trees, only on ABC. This time of year, only three things are important. Football, football, and football. And the only thing better than football is football in HD. With Time Warner Cable, you'll get the games you most want to see, all with the crystal clear picture and sound that only HD can bring. Discover for yourself the power of football in HD with digital cable and discover the power of you. Sign up for HD service from Time Warner Cable today. Call now. We're the Puckheads. Oh, the Puckheads! <laughs> We're hardcore and we will not miss a game. But the only way we can see our favorite team guy. is to go city to city and catch all the action. All the action! Thanks, Bob. Yeah. We're not like those fair weather hockey fans who've got some kind of fancy schmancy NHL center ice package so they can watch all the action at home. All the action! <coughs> at home? NHL center ice. Order today for $119. Every game's a home game on Time Warner Digital Cable. I thought you said the van was home. Welcome back to NFL Primetime, presented by Miller Lite. A magical season for the New Orleans Saints. We were there in week three, Superdome reopened, emotions you just cannot describe, and the Saints put it to the Falcons 23-3. They finished the season 10-6, winning the NFC South, just their third division title in history, and with tonight's win over the Eagles, they advanced to their first ever NFC Championship game. A crazy, great story in Nolens. 
We've got high goals, uh, and I couldn't be happier for you know the people in this town have been through so much. Our fans here uh, are fantastic, and they were a big part of this win tonight. They've been a big part of our season all year. You know, when I first got here, before the season started, after the city had been ravaged by Katrina, and all these people were trying to put their lives back together, you know, we sold out for the regular season. You know, ticket sales, which I thought was unbelievable because with, with as, I mean, you could just, you could just feel as, as bad a situation as these people were in, they still wanted to support their Saints, and they were really putting a lot of, I, I feel like, hope and, and everything in us. Saints are the first team ever to lose at least 13 games one season and then make it to a conference title game the next season. How does a community empathize and feel so much with a, with the sports team like like they have down in New Orleans? Jaws, I, I was there. I was there for three years, and I, I tell you something about it. the fans there. They persevered. They're loyal, and I tell you something. Regardless, good, bad, or different, they love their Saints. I mean, that's what this city's all about. It's not like they have a lot out of the franchise, but they wouldn't matter. This is a Saints town, and it's so good to see it happen. Yeah, so really, it, it's a yeah. wonderful story. No question, the success of the Saints has certainly added some positive into life of a, an area that really has been devastated. And, you know, we were there, and uh, we toured the, the entire area, and it was, it was devastating to see that. And the only thing I would say is all the people that are planning vacations and conventions, take it to New Orleans. The people on there, you can see how much they need our business to come back to that region and help that economy thrive. But right now, the Saints are giving them some real positive Who vibes. Who that? Who that? <laughs> you know, since realignment, the NFC South has had at least one team in the NFC title game wow. every year. Still ahead, we're going to look ahead to Sunday's game. Yeah. Oh, we got some superstars and some superstar teams. You won't want to miss this look ahead. Stay, stay close. There's only one way to describe an all-new Desperate Housewives. Oh. My. God. Sunday. Satisfy your craving. Don't hijack a Ferrari if you don't know how to drive. I feel a lot safer on the pill. Oh. With one delicious episode. You will not have that woman as a neighbor. Come on, you know you want some. An all-new Desperate Housewives, Sunday, 9, 8 Central, followed by an all-new Brothers and Sisters, only on ABC. NCAA Women's Basketball Championship coming in March. At the World Beer Cup, over 2,000 beers are judged from 540 breweries in 56 countries. And in 2006, one of those beers won gold for Best American Style Light Lager for the fourth time. In fact, Miller Lights won more awards at the World Beer Cup than any other light beer. For award-winning taste, there's no debate. Miller Lite, good call. We gave the all-new Altima-inspired design. Advanced technology. Aggressive performance. And what looked great on paper was even better on the road. Introducing the next generation Nissan Altima. Presented by Miller Lite and approved by the men of the square table. Good call. Here's your Miller Lite square off. It's going down on Sunday. Bears host the defending NFC champion Seahawks. Chicago beat down Seattle minus Sean Alexander 37 to 6 in week four. The late game on fire. Chargers and oh Patriots. San Diego 10 game winning streak. Patriots 11 and 1 in the postseason with Brady and Belichick. Square off is brought to you by Miller Lite and approved by the men of the square table. Join the debate at manlaws.com. Good call. 
coach has scored 38 points in the postseason. Adam Vinatieri has scored 26. <laughs> wow. NFL primetime, 8 p.m. Eastern on Sunday night. We're out.